Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our webinar series, Embracing Change. We're now on step five of the Qi 8, um, eight steps to self-discovery. And we have Anissa. Anissa, if you can unmute and put your video back. There we go. Hello. Welcome. Welcome back, Anissa. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us. Love. Thank love you the, for having me again. Love the top and the matching glasses. Exciting. <laughs> exciting. It wasn't intended. It happens, right? <laughs> like I just looked at my phone and I see all seven, seven o'clock, 7th of July, 7th of the month. So that's oh. a coincidence. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. So at 7.07, we'll take a pause uh, for five seconds. So thank you, Anissa, for being with us today. And um, you're, you're doing the assessment, uh, which is step number five on beliefs and patterns with all of the individuals and families that go through the Qi 8. So let's, I would like to have everybody kind of, we go step by step and have an understanding of what that even means, what that entails. Let's start really simple and go with, you know, the basic definitions. What's a belief? Like, what, what does that even mean? So beliefs are, you know, uh, if I take you through uh, the seven stages of mind development, you will understand because beliefs are that is connected to your mental, you know, mind. Okay. And beliefs are important because they give us a platform to function from, to operate from, okay? okay? If I had no belief, I wouldn't know who I am, where I am, what I'm supposed to do, what is expected of me and all. So certain beliefs are good for us, but okay. there are many beliefs that are not working for us any longer. Okay. But we, because these beliefs are so deep in our psyche, and our subconscious that we are not even conscious about it. And we think that's how I am, that's who I am, okay? But it's not who we are, it's what we believe to be true, what worked for us in the childhood, but it's not working for us now, okay? okay. Whatever happened in our childhood does not stay in the childhood. Okay. It actually, it's a, it's a setup for a lot of chronic conditions and diseases that later, decades later, we can experience also. Okay. okay. Now, first thing I wanted to talk about the seven stages of our mind development. See, okay. the, uh, there are certain beliefs that are formed in your mind, in the psyche, in the subconscious level that you're not even conscious of. Okay. So the first thing, that happens as we are born at birth is that we experience pain. Of course, you know, we are pulled out of the birth canal, we are hung upside down, these tubes going through our mouth into our system so that they can clean our system and then they make us hit us a bit, pat us so that we can cry and take a breath, okay? So we experience pain actually. And what the subconscious feels is pain and pain doesn't feel comfortable. So the subconscious go in, goes in a pain is bad, comfort is good. And the purpose for living is to be non-disturbed and to be comfortable. And this has begun as this becomes our survival based programming. Okay. It helps us survive beginning at birth. But because it's so deeply ingrained in us that we are not even aware that we have such a programming. Okay. Okay. Then the second belief that we get into the program we get is, and most of the other programmings are formed on this one, that the purpose for our being is to be non-disturbed and to be free of pain, any kind of pain, physical, emotional, mental. Okay. Okay. So the second one comes when we get hungry, okay, or we need a nappy change, or we need somebody to carry us. And when we cry, that's just a natural thing for a baby to cry, and then somebody will meet your need. So then 
the, the other programming that happens at a subconscious level is that if I complain now, <laughs> I'll be out of pain. And this becomes an anger-based programming. Now, the third stage comes when we are, let's say, two, three years old, when, you know, the parents are kind of teaching you to listen to them, okay? So if you're going and reaching for the cookie jar and it's time to eat dinner and mom is going to like say, hey, stop, and we experience pain again. And we learn that if I need to be out of pain, I need to please someone. So I better not say what I want. I better listen and I please, okay? And this becomes a, filth, a fear and guilt-based programming, okay? And we become people, some of the times we get stuck in these programmings. And then now we are operating out of fear and guilt. The next one comes when we start school and we are told, stand straight, don't talk, sit down, you know, everything, you know, this is the kind of uniform you're going to wear and where you're going to sit and all. So the fourth one, mind development that happens is that if I listen to authority, then I'm not going to experience pain. So I better listen and just follow what's told. Then comes when we are around eight or something, and then we want to be part of a group, okay? Have friends. And then uh, we can only be friends if I do certain things they want me to do, right? Or I dress the way they dress. I behave the way they behave. So the next programming comes, it is important that I be different that I have to change for them to accept me. This is the fifth mind uh, stage. Okay. okay, this is the fifth. So then in, we right? start changing ourselves. Okay. We, okay. we dress differently, we act okay. differently, we don't wanna eat certain foods because my friends are eating only this, I don't wanna eat, so, so that we can be accepted. Okay. And then comes the next programming is that we realize that I don't want to do what they want to do. I want to be myself. <laughs> so okay. then we impose that you be different, you change. Okay. And that's again an anger-based programming. And certain people get stuck in this and then they want everybody to follow what they think is right, do as they think is right, right and all. Okay? And all of these seven stages of mind development happens at a subconscious level. Okay. The seventh stage of develop, mind development is when we kind of reach our puberty and then we kind of get, know that I'm, uh, I, I want to feel important, okay? So you better listen to me and that's what we experience, you know, with teenagers that they're going to start acting out and we think they're acting out. No, they want to feel important and they want to be heard. Okay. So these are the seven stages of mind development and understand that all of these stages is there to keep us safe and comfortable. Okay. In that specific moment in time. In that sp specific, yes. And then these uh, decisions are held at a subconscious level. We are not even conscious of it till something happens. And then we are like, what's going on? Why am I feeling so angry all the time? Why am I people pleasers all the time? And then we question ourselves. So, you know, today's topic is the hard truths and confronting self takes courage, you know, because it's not easy to confront yourself. We have done everything to, uh, to kind of uh, numb everything that we feel, okay? And show an exterior <clears throat> that people are ready to accept us. Now, I'm not here to, today I don't wanna talk about what happened to us in our childhood. Okay. In fact, I wanna focus on what didn't happen, okay? okay? And what actually didn't happen is that we didn't get enough dose of vitamin L, okay? We were 
emotionally neglected. You know, many times people tell me, I had quite an okay childhood. I mean, there was nothing happened major, but we don't realize that as a child, we wanted to be loved. We wanted to be heard. We wanted to be seen. We wanted to somebody to validate us, acknowledge us, but our parents couldn't do that. They did a lot for us to drive us around, to get us to best schools, give us good food, clothe us and all. But our emotional need, okay, of feeling loved and accepted was not fulfilled. How a child would feel love is, you know, the way you look at your child, the way you acknowledge and validate what they're going through, the way you um, kind of give them positive encouragement but many of us did not have that. Okay. Many of us were told you better not sulk and, uh, and feel fear, be strong, get up, do the right thing. So our feeling body, our emotional body was never validated, okay? In fact, when we felt something, we were told that's very weak, you know, don't go and cry. That's not right. So think hard do hard, act better, you know, all of that, you know, we were encouraged to, or, or at least expected to do. So what we did is we just never went into the emotional aspect of our growth. And all of these emotional body has created a biochemistry in our body, okay? Biomagnetic field is there, which gets affected. It affects our immune system because your biochemistry says, oh, there's, uh, you know, there's stress because I'm not doing the right thing. I may be judged. I, I better meet the expectation because everything we do, everything we do is to feel loved. If you go bottom line of everything we say and do in our lives so that we can be acknowledged and loved for who we are, not what we have and what we are doing and what we have uh, accomplished, okay? But for who we are. And I've met people, very accomplished people, but then they tell me how hollow they feel outside because they gathered all of this and it never brought them that sense of love, okay? Now, again, the thing is, our parents couldn't give us because they never knew how to. They had never been given that kind of love. They were never, their emotional needs were never met. They were never acknowledged or validated. So we feel that if we ask for that, then I'm going to pressurize my mother or father and they already have so much going on. And then on top of that, they, they keep telling us, see, I'm doing it for you. So we feel as a child that maybe I'm a, being a burden on my parent. So I better not. And if at some point my mother says that to me and she's feeling very stressed or unhappy, we actually are like sponges we actually absorb all their emotions into our energy fields also. I work with people that they were carrying so much of all this emotional energy, which was not even theirs. It actually was their parents' energy. But as a child, you don't realize that you are okay. You are a good child in a bad or failed or dysfunctional environment. You are not a bad child, but a child cannot see that. It will say, I am bad. I'm not good enough. I am wrong. I'm unworthy. I don't deserve this because these are the messages that we keep getting from our environment and they may not be true. Most of them, of course, never true, but we misperceive what is being told to us and we start a, believing these things. But is it the messaging or is it our perception? That's, that's both. both. It could be both, okay? Some, some of the environment, you know, of course they were told how, how bad a child you are and you gave me so much trouble. And sometimes they feel if the, if the parent is overwhelmed and working so hard for me, I must be the problem, okay? So it could be both. And it's also sometimes it's one incident versus, you know, that, that, that can be remembered while 
there's there's 10x more that are completely the opposite, but the child yes. remembers that instant. Yes. Right? So, yes, absolutely, because there was so much emotional energy in there. Yeah. So whenever you know we say the issues that we carry will get trapped in your tissues, and then this is how we get sick okay, and mm -hmm. ill because all this energy implodes inside because we have never been encouraged to feel. See, if you look, if you go to a school and there are two, three-year-olds and you ask them, who is the strongest in the class? All hands will go up because they have no filter. They'll think, oh, I'm fine, I'm okay. And then the child gets all programmed. You go to a seven, eight-year-old's class and say, who's the strongest in the class? And they'll look at each other and they'll point to someone who they think is stronger than them because we are compared and we are told we are not as good as another child, right? So we are always comparing ourselves with someone else, but we never learn how, who we are. So all these beliefs are formed in very early ages of a developmental life. So this you're focusing on zero to seven because in the seventh example, you gave a, a, a later date. So is it zero to seven or it's further down? Because you mentioned one. Further down, yeah. The mind development, go, the brain develops till the age of 18, I think. So okay. a lot of, see, we are not even talking about a death of a parent or divorce or uh, you know that you were given up or something else happened. We are not even talking about those intense emotions. We are talking about what we didn't receive as children. So when we didn't receive, we thought that we have to be a certain way to be able to demand and be worthy to receive, yeah. right? And the second, I think, biggest misperception is that we think we should be loved by others because that's how it was. When I attended my very first workshop 27 years ago, I remember the instructor said, so what is it you love about yourself? And I listened to it and I was dumbfounded because I had no idea that one has to love themselves. I always thought that love has to come from someone else. Your parents have to love you and others have to love you so that then you can feel happy. But now we understand that this is about self-love. Our journey is about discovering all of these beliefs and patterns and misperceptions that are still part of our uh, DNA, it has become, because it goes within every cell of your body, your whole nervous system is listening and reacting to it. And then it goes under stress to secrete, to go into fight flight mode, stress hormones are coming in, they are affecting the cells, the development of the cells, it's affecting the immune system. So there is a lot of dysfunction that happens within your biochemistry, okay? But see, we were never brought up with this, uh, this kind of information. So we think if I do, if I have, if I get, then I'll be okay, then I'll be happy. So we have exchanged safety and security versus being happy and free because we feel safer when we uh, uh, do what is expected of us, okay? But if I want to do something I want to do, but as a child, I was told, don't run, don't climb the tree or you will fall, don't run or you will get hurt. Or, you know, I was always told uh, with every best intention that our parents had, but still, that becomes part of your cellular memory. You know, they, in America, there was a study done and they found that 97% of our illnesses and diseases is due to stress, which kind of we know. But what they said is, it is not circumstantial stress. It is cellular memory stress. Things that are held at a cellular level in the biomechanical field of your body, okay? The energy field of your body, which is held, is actually running you. And these programmings, these belief systems actually continue controlling our whole life. And we're not even aware of it. 
we are not even conscious of it. Okay, we just keep seeing and compare and do better and act better. And as we keep doing it over a time, over a period of time, the body starts inside getting so imbalanced, so uh, weaker because your immune system is so, and that is where it starts giving you signals. And how does the body signal you? Gets tired, maybe an ache and pain, maybe a headache, maybe, you know, you kind of catch a cold often or something and you feel you're getting weaker. But see, the, the environment that we live in has always given us the message to be stronger, okay? So what we do is we start numbing ourselves, we start medicating ourselves, we get into addictions so that we can numb all the feelings and emotions that are coming up because nobody, we never had a, a good example of someone who could teach us how to do that. Okay. Even in schools, we are told to be the best. Why do we have to be the best? Why can't we be who we are? Okay. So we were never given that kind of choice. So we think we don't have a choice. And all these beliefs that were formulated in our brain, it controls you for the rest of your life. And you don't even know that that is what's controlling you. In fact, we said that anything that triggers you is never the cause. The trigger is actually, is triggering something that is so deep within us that we would never otherwise be aware of it. So these things trigger those emotional body or the energy body for it to be released so we can heal. Our bodies are designed to heal, okay? We have heard this, that the bodies can heal itself. The only thing is we have created so much chaos inside. We have become so unaligned with who we are and our energy bodies and we have mismanaged our energy bodies that it starts breaking down and it cannot do the job it's, it, it can do, easily can do. Okay. Now, now I'll challenge you. I mean, at the end of the day, we have this perfection of creation, right? We have this incredible self-healing, self-regulating, you know, creation, right? Which is our yes. the human, the human body. From what you're describing, yes is is you know i mean i'm i'm getting depressed just listening to it right so now how do we move out of this and you know yes. the trigger obviously is the gift right it sounds like the trigger is the gift to begin the healing process or yes or is there so to else? get out of it i always tell people the first thing is intention when your intention is the most powerful force when I intend something, what I'm creating is this magnetic field around me that I want to be happy, I want to be well. And you have heard, I'm sure you have heard stories that people have overcome all their handicaps and been able to achieve what they wanted to because they intended and they saw themselves there somewhere in their mind. They created that as a reality and they started believing that it is possible. Okay, so first thing is when you start intending, you start desiring, okay? We say that when you desire something, that something also desires you okay. because we live in, a, in, a, in this universe of law of attraction, whatever, you know, you must have seen that um, many times uh, we think of someone and we're like, yeah, I must call this person and that person calls you or you're looking for something so focused on it that you will find it because you are connecting energetically to that, yeah. okay? And, but most of the time what has happened is we as humans, we don't desire it, we don't change anything because that means change. We are afraid of change. We don't uh, make that intention because we become so comfortable in the way we are living. And we don't even know People, they are people who actually are so comfortable being sick because they think that's just what they know. 
or being angry or fearful or guilt ridden because that becomes so comfortable. And another thing is that these emotions actually always secrete a chemical in your brain and your brain gets addicted to that chemical. So actually we are addicted to our emotional body also. So that is why when we want to get out of it, we have to have the intention. We have to get out of the body and become bigger than this body that I can do it. I want it so much. And, I, and then when we intend it, all doors start opening up for us. We will find ways to have it. It's not actually we say that you don't have to even think how it's going to come to you. You just focus on where you want to go, intend that, and feel as if it's already happened. So you are in the beingness of that already happened. Instead of I have to do, then I will have the tools and the ways, then the key I'll get, and then I'll open the door. No, the door is open. And that's where I'm headed. So, you know, your body cannot tell the difference between a fact and reality. A fact and a thought, sorry. So even if you think of something, the body thinks it's already happened. So if you put yourself in the future self where you want to go, the body thinks you're already there. Okay. So it will open all new neural pathways open up in your brain to help you get there, achieve that. And I've had amazing stories from people. I have read, I have met, I have myself experienced amazing things that when my intention is clear, when I get connected to the emotion of that, that when I am there, how would I feel? We have never allowed ourselves to feel the elevated emotion because we have never allowed ourselves to feel the low vibrational emotion. We don't know how to help ourselves and allow ourselves to feel the higher vibration that Okay? Because we have numbed ourselves to the emotional body and we get into these addictions, a lot of kind of addictions, you know, work is addiction, food is addiction, you know, now drugs and, you know, all that. And all these things are like Band-Aid. Okay? And Band-Aid never works in the long run. And, if I, and I see some little kids showing their fancy Band-Aids now. We have even come up with colorful band-aids so that children would be happy. And now they want that colorful one that, they that their friend had so they can hurt themselves so they can put a nice colorful band-aid of maybe, you know, the cartoon characters that have come up. So see how we are programming our children into band-aid is fine. Just band-aid effect, fix everything, don't feel, okay? And if the child is crying, we always say, hey, don't cry, okay? I'm telling you, don't cry. Why not? That's the natural response of the body to release the feeling, the energy that it's feeling in that moment. And we stop the child and we tell them, don't feel. We make feelings wrong. And this is the problem. This is why we are seeing young people so addicted to drugs now. And I know that there is so much pain inside of them that what these drugs do is to numb that pain for them because they don't know how else nobody's there to show them the way or help so now, them release those emotions in a healthier way. So you've got the intention and you've, you've, you've opened up the door and yes. then, and you have- And you have then yeah. you have to feel and, you know, like I said, when you confront yourself, it's the courage. You allow yourself to feel whatever comes up okay. at a feeling level, any emotion, because the fear of feeling the emotion is greater than feeling the emotion. So when we start feeling that emotion come up and we cry, we kind of like sometimes we can even have a breakdown. And that's okay. That is just how the release is going to happen for us. Okay. And when we okay it, the body will bring it all out. It's like a detox happening. You know, we all go through detox and you know that the body wants to purge them. 
and this is an emotional purge that happens. It is nothing wrong or bad. And sometimes when I work with people, people tell me their pain intensified. And I said, good. You know, the body's bringing up more to purge out. Or they cried a lot. Or they felt very tired. However, everybody's body is going to do it differently. But what happens is that when you emotionally clear yourself, there is a powerful rejuvenation of the physical body that happens. The physical body will feel rejuvenated. You will feel like this energy in you that you had never felt before. The strength starts showing up, okay? So you have to validate what you feel, acknowledge, understand, and then you love that emotion that you're feeling, that you were so afraid of, to love it, to embrace it, okay? We have never loved the emotion. That is also energetically, that's us. That's part of who we are. So if I'm rejecting, I'm never going to be complete and whole. Okay. And then begins the inquiry that we are going to say, so what is this teaching? Okay. Yeah. What is there for? What am I learning in this? And you will understand you may not get it then, but later you will see that that was the <clears throat> best thing that happened. And many of us wait either to get sick, lose something in our lives, or, you know, relationships fail, or anything major, you know, emotional traumas can happen. And then we wake up and say, okay, I better look at my life. And I tell people, why wait for that? Why not? Why can't we start? the self-discovery journey before, before it gets so hard okay, and tougher for us. Let's do it because we are all eventually headed that way. We will all have to look at our issues that we have never looked at. Okay? It's just universe and nature will bring it up for you in some way or the other. But to start, I mean, to acknowledge it, to understand, well, I don't know about understand it, but acknowledge it, feel it, and let it be, but then to embrace it, right? So today, for example, was the first time I was on a tennis court, and for the first time, I actually swore loudly on a tennis court, and I know where it was coming from, and then I could feel it go through all the way until about half an hour before the webinar, right? Mm -hmm. And But the thing is to love that, to love that feeling and be grateful for that feeling? Like, walk, walk us through that. To, to, to have compassion. See, when you swore, yeah. how did you feel? There was something you felt, there okay? Was, there was, yeah, there was Either incompetent was, or you, I, nobody ever sees me or I'm just invisible or whatever you must have felt. That part that felt that, doesn't that part of you deserve to be loved okay the part of you not the actual yes. action through the emotion we understand those fragments of ourselves that we have judged or defragmented ourselves to or pushed away the emotions will bring those you know i will tell you the story when i was raising my son i was very hard on him and whenever i would think now that oh I did that, I could have done differently. Of course, I wouldn't feel very good. And I would feel guilty. And I knew that if I feel guilty, it's not doing any good to me or to him. Yeah. So I thought about why would I do that? My The part of me that reacted and wanted to, you know, bring it all out at him or, you know, be strong with him and all. And I understood that I was feeling so um, alone, uh, not understood, you know, um, negative, full of fear, full of negative things and all that. And I would just take it out on him. And I started embracing that part of me, that young mother that I was, okay? And I, and I gave her what, see, if somebody had come at that time and told me, it's okay, I know what you're going through, it'll be better. I would have felt much better about how I acted. 
okay? Instead of judging myself, right? So you can reparent now yourself. What needs to be done is reparenting of ourselves now through love, through understanding, through embracing, okay? Through acknowledging, through seeing that actually all of this was there to make me realize something that I would never have realized before. I would have experienced life in a way that I would never have ex experienced before, right? I would have, you know, uh, opened myself to more things and different people and different experiences and understand and become more of my full potential, live my life more joyously, more fully, more wholesome than oh, I better stay safe and not get out of it, okay? So it actually allows you, the, the, these emotions coming up allows you the opportunity to live actually more of a fuller life, more of a joyous life, to become the full potential of who you are. You know, that's the upside of it, okay? And when we understand that and how free you feel, how liberated you feel, and then you are freer and liberated you can access parts of you that were never accessible before, the higher parts of us, the part that is not even only physical and mental, we can even access our heart more, our soul, the source that we are. Do you even understand what amazing intelligence we must have that, you know, we have about 3 billion or 30 billion chemical reactions happen in our body per second? What is that intelligence? Have we ever stopped to feel and connect with that? If we were to connect more with that and appreciate it, do you think it's not going to heal our bodies? It will. It is beyond all of this disease and you know discomfort and all. It's connecting to that higher intelligence within us. So when we understand that that is where we are headed, our intention gets stronger. We get the courage to go beyond. So it's not depressing. It's only depressing to the mind. Okay. The mind feels, no, no, I'll be out of my comfort zone. I'll be out of my safety place. So it will no more be in survival. It will have no control. And mind doesn't like having no control. Mind always wants to control. Okay. But in control, we never have full experiences of life, right? So, so now, so go ahead. Yeah. Next, what? Okay. So we've 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 come to the next stage, and then yeah. What, uh... And then you know how am I? You know, of course, uh, what I said is a big thing. Yeah. How about we can take some baby steps into it? Yeah. Okay. And the baby steps are wake up in the morning, at least give yourself 10 minutes of that safe space to be yourself, to connect with yourself, okay. to connect to that inner intelligence, to our soul, if people are open to that, you know, soul is the part of us that is unbroken part of us that is never affected by all the stories that we have all these stories that we create and we recycle all the time. The soul is not affected by that. When you get quieter and you start connecting more to the soul, you're stepping out of those stories. You're stepping out of all the negativities, all the low vibrational energies, and you're elevating yourself now to more of a higher vibration, okay? Of love, of joy, of truth. No. I'll, I'll stop oh, you for a second. Most good. people won't even know what to do in that 10 minutes. Can you? Yeah. I, I so know, I tell I know it's not about doing. Take just a breath and connect with your breath. Okay. Feel the breath. Feel the breath go in. Feel the breath go out. Find something to be grateful for. Okay. And it's not something that we think we achieved or had success or, you know, all that. No, we can be grateful that we are alive, that I can breathe. Anything that's just mundane things, just very simple things. 
start feeling gratitude for it. Okay. And as we go into this gratitude mode, our energies again rise up because gratitude is one of the highest level of energy that puts you in the state of receivership, highest state of receivership it puts you in. Okay, Receiving what we want, what we desire. So if I, my intention is there, doors will open up and then we can put the intention out, I want to feel more happier. I want to have more healthier body. I want to have more vitality. And then somebody will come up in your life or something will show up in your life or miraculously your pain will just disappear even. Okay? It has happened many times for people. There have been miraculous experiences people have felt in their bodies. Okay, So it's not just something, even you know, signs and they are measuring all these electric fields around our bodies, the biochemical fields. And they say that the field around your heart is hundred or thousand times stronger than the field around your brain. Okay. So can we live more in the heart and create more heart, more heart coherence energy okay. and send it out, send love to people as you open your heart and you're expanding that energy, you will receive because whatever you send out, you get back, okay? It comes back to you also. So there are many things, you know, if you can't do that, you can go out, be in nature, you can just get in the sunlight, allow yourself to, you know, receive that sunlight that is so crucial uh, for our bodies, you know, ground ourselves on the ground, feel the ground, uh, look up at the sky they say when you look at the horizon your mind just quietens because you can't think anymore okay so getting yourself in a mode where you get really nice quiet and as we get quiet in between the two thoughts the answers will come to you so as the more we learn to be quiet the more the solutions come to us answers come to us Yes, and I've, 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 now they have a better understanding of that morning yes. of opening up, right? The gratitude, the opening of the heart, increasing the vibration, welcoming the receivership, and then creating right. that space to have whatever they're inquiring to show yes. up in some form you or the other, up. but also with not having an expectation about it either, right? That, that could mock The things. expectation you don't want to have is how it's going to happen in your life. That is not our problem. That is not for us to decide. We can be focused on what I want. Okay. Yeah. And when I have that, if I have that, when I will have that, yeah. what emotion will I feel? Let's get into the emotion of that. Feel the elevated emotion before the event even happens. It brings you closer to the event because that is the vibration you're sending out to the universe and the universe that we live in is a vibrational universe it understands vibration so if you're sending it out that i'm so happy and joyous the universe says oh okay let me match this energy for you okay we can attract whatever we want to ourselves by feeling and focusing on that you know, there was an experiment that was done by a French scientist and he got these, uh, and he created an arena and they were, he hatched some chicks there. And then he had a robot and the chicks thought the robot was the mother. So they would follow the robot everywhere. Okay. And this robot would just go around in very haphazard way in the arena and the chicks would follow thinking that's the mother. Then after some days, what he did is he, he put a partition and separated the chicks from the robot. And then he turned the robot on. And what they noticed is that the robot started going more towards where the chicks were. The chicks were pulling the robot closer to them. If that is the power these chicks have, can you imagine what power we have? But because we were never educated in it or brought to our attention, we never use it. 
we have immense power to attract what we want in life. Most of the people who have achieved because they somehow dreamed about it and knew they can do it. They knew there are possibilities. They didn't know how, and then it happened for them. Okay. So the thing is, we, we give up too fast. We are not persistent with what we want in life. We try for one day, two days, I meditated or nothing happened, I give up. But when we want to exercise our bodies and look good, we will just commit to it, go to the gym and spend hours. And that's okay. But when you want to change your inner reality, we give up, give up too fast, way too fast. Okay. So persistence is another thing. Regular, regularly, you know, practice it. Have no attachment. Just focus and feel as if it's already happened. And this is the formula to have a clear intention and feel the elevated emotion that it will bring for you. So you are actually attracting the future to you now. You're not waiting for the future to happen in the future. The future is happening in the present moment and your body doesn't even know that you're not in that because the body cannot make the, uh, uh, differentiate that it's only a thought and it's not an actual event. So it can be as easy as that, but it needs practice. It needs sure. that strong intention that I want this in my life now. I, I hope they're starting to teach this at the Harvard and the Wharton entrepreneurship uh, programs at the MBA school. Oh, I think they should start it in the schools with children, <laughs> you know, because that is when their minds are developing. And if you give them that idea, you know, children who are loved, they grow up to be more healthier and happier individuals. So how can we love our children in a yeah. better way? Yeah. That is the question. It's not how much we can provide for our children, yeah. but what is their emotional needs, how they're feeling to validate them, to acknowledge them, to look in their eyes and they see love coming from you. That is what they are looking for. And positive encouragement is what they're looking for. And yes, you know, in certain moments, we would say things that we don't mean, and then we can go back and talk to our children about it, that that is what I meant or didn't mean, and I'm sorry. You know, to have that kind of a dialogue with children, okay, we don't do that because that's not how we are all brought up. And especially our parents didn't know how to do it. So clear the air, apologize, reframe. Have compassion on the kids, children to have compassion on the parents for doing the best they knew how, okay? Having compassion on ourselves for doing whatever we thought was the best, okay? Or right in that moment, in that moment, I couldn't control my emotional body, so I would let it out on my child. But I didn't. I wasn't doing it purposely to hurt. Okay, he became because he broke something, so it just he became the outlet for my emotional body to have an expression. Okay, now now if I were to mother my child, it would be very different because I understand better. But I have to have compassion on that part of me. I have to love that emotion also because emotion are all energy. You cannot destroy energy. You can learn to transmute energy now into love, those emotions into love. Okay. And especially we have to let go of this need to understand because the need to understand is also a big hindrance in our evolution. You know, Caroline Miss, she says, our need to understand is the biggest block in our healing. Because we go in the mind and then the mind concocts a story and then it changes the story. But the mind understand the nature of your mind is never to be satisfied. Mind always wants more, better, different. More, better, different. More, better, different. And now with technology, faster. That's another <laughs> Now, <error>. now. <laughs> yes, right now, instant. 
because we have been so uh, addicted to all instant gratifications now. And yeah, one more thing I wanted to also add for people who yeah. let's say don't, cannot do whatever we talked about. Uh, this is Byron Katie's work. And she says, when suffering is believing our thoughts. Believing our thoughts. But when we challenge our thinking, we can liberate ourselves. And she has four questions, she says, to challenge yourself. And the first question you ask, any belief you have, which is kind of giving you kind of a, uh, not a good feeling, you can ask, is it true? And then you can say, yeah, it is true, okay? My parent, parents didn't love me, for example, okay? Because that was how I rea rea my reality was, for example. Then the second question you ask it, are you absolutely sure that it's true? And then when you ask that way, the mind stops and then you kind of take a check inside and like, yeah, but I'm not absolute about this, okay? And some people could still say yes. The answers have to be just yes or no, okay? And both are fine. Yeah, Any answer that comes. Yeah, of course. The third question you ask is, when I believe this thought to be true, what does this do to me? How do I feel? And you will say, wow, I don't feel loved. Then I feel depressed. I feel this, I feel that, you know, I don't have energy in my body and, 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 and all that. Okay. <laughs> then the fourth question you ask is, if I didn't believe this thought to be true, who would I be? Who am I without believing this thought? And then you see, without the thought, who are you? That's the expansion. That's the evolution. That's the inner dialogue. Your inner story changed. Okay. What is because the name of the book question, again? What is the name of the book? Or the... Um, the book is Loving What Is. Loving What Is. Okay, so we'll send yes, that out with the video. Byron Katie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she says, she goes through these four questions and then she turns the question around as my parents loved me and then give yourself a couple of examples. Then the yeah. mind says, yeah, actually they did love me. Oh yeah, yeah, they did. Now I changed the story because now I gave myself to look at the same story in a different way. Whenever you change the way you look at things, things you look at change. So, so when, when you change that story energetically, is it from that moment everything yes. changes or is it now? Like yes. what is the biological shift that happens? Oh, by law, whenever you know the truth, you can't go believing a lie again, right? When you see the truth and you understand that didn't work for me, that put me in a very depressed state, for example, I don't wanna live there anymore. I don't wanna be that kind of person anymore. And then that intention of living a healthier, happier life becomes stronger now, okay? more powerful now, because you see that this is not where I want to be. I remember exactly when I made the choice that I don't want people to make me feel good because if I did, then they have the power to make me feel bad too. I but have if, the power. I mean, the, the second question you asked about absolute, most of the beliefs or most of the supposed truths that, that we hold I mean, to ask that second question of absolute would be challenged on almost everything. Yes, almost everything can be challenged by that. So and basically, you absolutely this is believe that it's true. No, because there is no absolute of anything. No. Okay. It's just how we see it or how the circumstances were such. And you know, most of these things happen to bring us to a place of consciousness and awareness that we would never have gone to if we weren't challenged by these things in our lives, by certain things and circumstances or people or whatever that we experience. It is actually very enriched thing that enriches your life because now most of the people who have done great things, they have suffered a lot. Like, you know, uh, one of example is Eckhart Tolle. 
he said his pain body was so big that he wanted to end his life. And he went to sleep and he, he, he told himself, I'm sick and tired of myself. And then he realized I and self, there are two of me. And then he realized one was his ego and one is his self that he is. And then he was able to differentiate what was the ego body and what was the consciousness. When we are coming to that place, we are no more a victim of life. Life is always helping us to elevate to a different, to evolve ourselves. But we take that as, oh, life did, this was unfair. This person did was unfair. This situation was unfair. We say nothing is unfair or fair. It is an experience we had so that we can evolve. And without any experiences, we will never evolve. We would be like, okay, it's comfortable. I'm just having my food and uh, playing tennis and that's just life, right? Yeah, but to, to, accept, to accept every event as evolution or growth is obviously easier said than done, right? To see the opportunity in that moment, whether it's a disease, whether it's a relationship, whether it's an event, so how and failure, does... because no failure is even bad or wrong, because then we learn our lessons, right? We learn to overcome it and go beyond what we never expected ever to be. We've reached those heights then, okay? So what would be the process? I mean, you just showed the four questions. What would be the process to looking for the opportunity in the event, in the quote unquote failure, or learning or whatever you want to call it. What, what process would you recommend or suggest or, or? Well, for different people, it's going to be different, okay. right? Depends on what their beliefs are or how, where they're stuck in. So it could be just a very gradual thing or it could be a very major shift for some people, okay? And uh, it all depends. And certain things that you think were uh, not that I haven't been able to. I, I just saw this girl, she's a swimmer and she came back and the second time she comes back, she said, you know, I told you about, I have been slouching and I said, yeah. And she said, you know, after that talk that we had, I've noticed I don't slouch anymore. And I've been working on it for so long and it's gone. So, you know, everybody's bodies are going to respond in a different way. It's the question is, how committed are you to be well? How committed the committed you are, your body is going to go at quantum speed. Okay. Yeah. But it's your commitment. But, you know, people are scared because it's going into an unknown place, unfamiliar place, I should say. And you have to let go of those familiar parts of us, of yourself. And sometimes people have those attachments. Oh, I don't want to grow big because then my family may not like it. But understand when you change, you actually change the whole family because the rules are going to change, the play is going to change, and they will change. And their reaction to you will change. Their responses will change because everything is affected by how you make the change within you. Yeah, so the external will also shift for you. Okay, but it's the I've... internal shift that That's is important to yeah. make the external shift because we are human beings. We are not human doings, but yeah. we have become human doings. So if I do, then I will have, and then I'll be happy. And it yeah. has worked for us. Yeah. Okay, so let's just go through the key. So there's intentionality you said as the first piece. Then the second, let's just, I'd rather have it from you. I, I've, I've Okay, so First I'm is, committed to be well. Yes. And I want to see myself happier, healthier, full of vitality. Okay. And if I reach that place, how would I feel? Wow, I can't even, I, I don't even know how I would feel. Yes. Then you have to actually re-familiarize your body with that feeling that you think you will have. Because sometimes, the body is not even 
familiar with the feeling of vitality or joy or love because we haven't felt that. So we have to give and reteach ourselves how would it feel? How does it feel when I look up at the sky? Yeah, that feels good. Start feeling good. Start from there. If that is where you have to start. Start for when I embrace a child, when I see a child smile, how does that feel? Reteaching your body that emotion. Okay. And as you start feeling those emotions more, you will say, I like this more. I don't like that. I feel better here. And you will see that you will start standing straight. You will be more confident. You will, your walk, the way you walk will change. Okay. And then you start practicing. And sometimes, yes, there are bigger issues that are trapped in your tissues, then you need some external help from certain therapists or body work or whatever else. There's so much out there now. Yeah. Okay? There are so many, which our parents' time, these kind of Excessive. tools were not even available. Now there is tremendous availability. And the thing is, it's so much more faster because we, you know, the way I learned was through a lot of psychology. And it was about blame and respond, somebody else responsible and all. And now I understand that that keeps you stuck in a, and you keep recycling there and cycling there, okay? And it's not about that. It has to step out into a place of what you wanna create now. And then, you know, um, you can help people with uh, certain things and making them see their childhood or realities in a different way. When they start seeing it differently, when they question it, okay? when they make the choice, no more suffering, no more pain, that's done. Okay, I'm just going to learn and grow because that is where I want to be. I want to be my full potential. I want to live my life joyously. And you encourage people, you see, and they will see the change happen, not just at a mental level, at a physical level, yeah. how the bodies the change. Body. Yeah. Yes. And that becomes, you know, the motivation, the inspiration for people. And then I tell them to read certain books which I feel that they will benefit from that or watch certain programs. You know, now there's so much available on YouTube. Yeah. Um, meditation, if that is what they want to do, sound therapy, if that is what, they, which is more easier and, you know, so many things available. Yeah. So it depends on what that person is, wherever they are, um, then they can use some of those. All right, Anissa, thank you. Thank you very much. Very How about welcome. a few closing, closing remarks to just what nudge or one last thing you'd like everyone to consider or reconsider? Well, I, I really feel that the moment we wake up in the morning, build on the intention of your day and see the day and feel the gratitude for a wonderful day ahead of you. Life is waiting for you to open up now and embrace it and live it fully. Let's all build that intention of a full life, a joyous life, an empowering life. Okay. And I wish you all a very empowered and blissful and happy life. Thank and you. thank you for being here. Yes, thank you everyone. Thank you, Anissa. I mean, if we just, those who are on the call today and those who will listen um, going forward, if we all began with that, imagine the energetic, um, you know, love that we would bring out and the quantum change that would that would occur. Yes, Thanks that would the affect sharing. the whole world. You know, when you change, everything around you changes. You are not a singular entity in this whole world, in this universe. We are all interconnected and we are all at the highest level. We are all one. So your change will affect someone else, something else, and it will become a quantum change. Now. All right. Thank you, Anissa. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank for you being, for being here. For being here with us. And uh, we'll be back next week with step number six, which will be about the story and that that drives your life and looking at uh with barbara who's going to be looking at your social drivers and how we show up every day so thank you thank you again anissa have a good night thank you everyone and we we'll see you next week all right okay.